Let's go to the board. It's brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Make every moment more. All the lines from FanDuel on Thursday. And Mike, you want to throw a new feature? You want to mix in some questions about some of these teams? <laughs> yeah, I thought it would be fun, just certain games, to go inner monologue. Okay. And I give you the question that I immediately am asking. So the first game, we start Big Noon on Fox. Maserati. What stupid nicknames will Gus have this week? Number seven, Texas. They're back. Minus four and a half, hosting number 25, K-State. All I wrote down was, we have to bet K-State, don't we? Question mark. Mm -hmm. I was not impressed at all by Malik Murphy. I know it's his first start. I understand it's not an easy thing. But Murphy from the top is giving off major Joe Milton vibes. Million dollar arm, has no idea where it's going. He is, he is firing bullets on swing passes. He's hitting tight ends for four yards at 88 miles an hour. Tough scene, was not impressed. Now they covered against BYU, but who cares? K-State, look no man, joke. this QB rotation is real. It's a thing, our man Will Howard. But if you're not up on Avery Johnson, the this, freshman, he's yep. basically a 100 yard rusher every week. They bring him in, he's Taysom Hill. Yeah. Um, K-State. Normally, I'm not a fan of the two QB deal. I know. But they're kind of threading that needle. Here's, the, here's my thing. It's just like the Arizona game last week. I'm invested in Oregon State over eight and a half. I needed to bet ASU at a minimum to try to double dip, but maximum, hey, man, I can get some money off the table, the whole bit. It's the same thing here. I need Texas to get in that Big 12 title game. I need them to win here. Mm-hmm. But you know what I don't want to do? Lay north of a field goal, much less north of four, against a K-State team that might have the best defense in the Big 12. I know statistically you'll tell me they do. Yeah, and Um, I get it. I mean, not everybody's played everybody and all that stuff. But what I like about Kansas State, in addition to the fact that they always play defense, did last year, won the Big 12 last year, their run game. Yeah. They have two running backs, two quarterbacks. They run for over 200 yards a game. Yep. And when Texas lost to Oklahoma, they got pushed around. That's a great, no, great point. So I know Texas statistically is a good run defense, but you got to find some comps, some comparables. And I think Kansas State should be able to run the ball on the road in this game. Yeah. And the other side of it is, I think they can get after the quarterback. They can. I, I Listen, this is a play against Malik Murphy as much as anything. I don't want to be unfair to the young man, but with no Quinn Ewers, it's not the same it's Texas It's a scary team. spot for Texas. And I don't buy a goddamn thing they did against BYU last week. BYU is horrible. Yeah. I'm playing K-State. I got to play the four and a half. Let's do I, it. I, hey, look, I'm praying for a 31-27 final. Texas wins, but K- KSU covers. I get to have my cake and eat it too. But if I don't, look, if Texas wins and I lose a singular bet, that's fine. That's fine. Everything's fine. Believe it or not, I am rooting for that too. One, because of all your investments in Texas. Two, it's just a better storyline down the stretch if Texas is in some bigger games. Hey, there's a five-way t- a tie up top of the Big 12. I know. It's Iowa wild. State's somehow involved. Iowa State's going to be the party crasher that's going to hurt me. It's going to be That's going to hurt me if ridiculous. they get in. And I have an opinion on their game this week. So Night heavy. We'll get to it. We'll save it. I'm playing KSU, though. Second game, Ole Miss, number 10 in the country, newly minted in the CFP. Minus three, this line moved. Minus three against Texas A&M. It's noon on ESPN. I have a statement to read. I, Mike Valeni, have been banned by Jim Costa and the Cash Ticket Podcast from ever speaking on, betting on, or even remotely thinking about betting on Texas A&M football. I am not allowed to be a part of anything Jimbo Fisher does. Thank you. It's probably for the best, Mike. No, you've banned me, so I'm not even allowed to talk about it. The side. For I know people where who I do lean. care. Yeah, the people who do care, who want a side, who like these teams or want to bet this game, I think it's Texas A&M. The problem I have with A&M? For as much as I like their defense and I like their front, yeah, they got pushed around against Tennessee, man. Well, that's the scary thing, right? Is because and their Ole run Miss defense. Do the same damn thing. Yep, yep. I can't do it. But the public's on Ole Miss. The numbers move down to three. Right. It's a flat three, which is where the SP plus puts it. So there's really no value in the game. Yeah, but it, I think the cap would be if Texas A&M's front gets after it, they can win this game on the road. They can. And Ole Miss has shown major variance, major droughts. It's a, it would be a lean to AM. I'm not going to play it no. because I'm banned and I'm going to it's listen for the to best. You. I want to go to the next game at Please. noon because I have so many questions. It's number 15 Notre Dame, lay in three at Clemson. My first question is Is caller Tyler dead? No, I saw he did a QA with tigerillustrated.com, an exclusive. Tyler You're from Spartans. No way. And I have the quotes. Wait, they interviewed this yes. guy? Yes. 
So this is the guy, for people who don't know, and if you've been under a rock, he calls into the coach's show that Clemson does every week and goes, like, you tell me where I'm wrong here, but in other words, why do you make as much money as you do? Why have you let the program get where it is? And Dabo went on a five-minute tirade. It was nuts. It was. You never see this stuff. It got to him. But Tyler from Spartanburg, here are some of his thoughts following the exchange. He said, my girlfriend has been all over me for this. Basically said he sounded like a child on the call. He said, I agree with her. Tact is not one of my strong suits, especially when I'm upset. But I listened to Dabo, and I had to sit through his spiel about how we'd be 8-0 without the turnovers, and if, and if, and if, and it upsets me. He said, I'm explaining what happened. If I had to do it again, I would have been more respectful. But he goes on, Mike, to detail the things that we've talked about. And this is from a Clemson fan. This guy's been following the team since he was a little kid. And he talks about how they haven't adopted name, image, and likeness and how they aren't on board with the modern college and football. Right. And how Dabo has let this happen over the course of several seasons. And he's right. And I... Um, he also says something I think I will think resonate Dabo, with you. I think Dabo's a huge jerk off. Can I, I think, just level with you guys? Yeah. I think Dabo Sweeney is acting like a fucking baby. I mean, hey, it's cool. All right, you don't like what I make? That's cool. But hey, why don't you apply for the job? Okay ridiculous remark. When he said that he's part of the problem, that, that yeah, this exactly. fan who cares about his team, that wants his team to Dabo, win is part of the problem. You're one of the 10 highest paid coaches in America. You're four and four. Your offense can't crush a grape in a food fight. You're not good. You don't embrace NIL. You don't embrace the portal. Program erosion is a real thing. How many times are you going to tell me you've won two natties in seven years? It's not about where you've been. It's about where you are and where you're going. The program trajectory any objective observer looks at Clemson and goes, DEFCON 1 might be returning to being old Clemson. This is not good. Here's the quote and this little passage that I think you'll identify with. The guy says, Tyler, so for me, it's less about Clemson, less about the program and more. You built all this, went from Tommy Bowden and Clemsoning, and now you're stubborn and you won't adapt. You're destroying it all. It's not that Clemson is 4-4. Four and four. It's the unwillingness to adapt and take something that was created, that's where my frustration comes from. There shouldn't be a coach's call-in show, but when there is, someone should be asking these questions because it's been a clear decline and no one else is bringing it up. 100%. So you think about it. These, these, you, you mentioned it before. I think wrote, Tyler's actually a really good me too. fan because those thoughts, well, A, I mean, I, I shouldn't, <laughs> hey, I think he's smart because I agree with him. No, I mean, I've said all those things, so it's nice that a Clemson fan agrees. But, but Mike, think about it. These college towns, you mentioned it before we put the mics on. You're very insulated in, yeah, in a, a place like Clemson. This guy's sitting here going, why isn't anybody sounding the alarm bells? I'll call into the damn coach's show, and I'll give him a piece of my mind. They're not sounding the alarm bells because there is too much financial compromising with the media in college towns for anyone to really do anything about it. I mean, in, in a lot of cases, you'll see in these college towns – one of these writers, you'll, you'll, you're, you're basically a fanboy. You're doing a recruiting site or something. And then all of a sudden, hey, my wife works at the school. Or, hey, my kid goes to the school. Or, Look, man, it's too interconnected. The reality is, if you want to do a good job about it, you can't have any friends at the school. You can't have any, you can't be compromised. You can't earn extra money on the side by, you know, how about this a couple of weeks ago? I mean, Marcus Freeman, one of the reporters in the room, coaches Marcus Freeman's son in youth football. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. But this is the world we're in. We're in propaganda land. So, look, I love Tyler. Me too. I, honestly, I wish we could get, like, Tyler T-shirts. I, I loved what he said. Now, again, I, I don't like Dabo Sweeney. I think Dabo and Jimbo basically are the same human spelled differently. <laughs> They're both fake pieces of garbage. Yeah. So, for me... Um, spot on, Tyler. I know you don't listen to the podcast, bro. I don't even know who we are, but you got two fans in Detroit. Mm -hmm. I'd like to let you know that. And with all of that said, I'm betting Clemson. No, you can't. I can. don't tell me this is some spot because none of the matchups favor Clemson. Notre Dame's got a front. They got a good secondary. They're turning the ball over left and right. How? How? Okay. I mean, maybe you tell me they slow down Estime. Maybe, right? Okay, Clemson can stop the run. Okay. Sam Hartman's going to make a couple big plays here. Is he? And the number's flat three. There's no value. Where's Vern? There's no value. Here's the deal. It is about, if everything you're saying is true, this number's higher. I don't believe Clemson's this bad. 
and I don't believe Notre Dame is this good. I look at Notre Dame's skill people. Let's go back to it. Freshmen, young people. Strength of Clemson, that's secondary. Pretty yes. Pretty good. Yes. I don't think Sam Hartman's that good. I don't think this scheme really fits who he is. There's no slow mesh. There's no, look, nice player, very handsome I'm not going to typecast him to the Clawson system. I think he could be more The claw than fence? Yeah. Um, the other problem is, Earth is on Notre Dame. This this is this is one of those, what do you call it? A pros Joe's deal. 25% yeah. of the bets make 56% of the money on Clemson. They're at home. They have not lost four games in a row since 2010. You get to a point where something has to give. They can't keep losing. You had the coach melt down this week. I just feel like. If I'm not there for Clemson right now, mm. I can't be there with them the rest of the year. I, look, I know it doesn't it's make... It's so gross. I know it is. You think I feel good about this? Look at what we do in the NFL. I know we do it in the NFL, but this is college. And you don't have to. There's too many other games on the board to have to bet Clemson football. Well, first of all, the Wi-Fi just went out in the middle of the show, and I wanted to get you an updated line. So bear with me. Well, Adam, and blow it up edit. on your phone. Because if you can flash three and a half, I see maybe why you want to do it. The other thing I'd consider is the under, but it's been plummeting. I think last I saw, it's down to 44 and a half. Yeah, the three and a half is just look. I actually think Clemson wins the game, but I'll really? take that three and a half gladly because, again, you know, does it strike you a bit as a 20 to 17 rock fight? A little, a little bit. bit. I see it as a defensive game. Yeah, I do. And, and I'm getting the three and a half. Look, if you're getting three I'm and a half, it's much doing, better than three. If Grant, you know, I'm not doing this whole ifs and buts, candy and nuts. But when you look at the anatomy of Clemson's losses, I mean, they had Florida State dead to rights. They missed like a 29 yard field goal. The Miami thing, Klubnik, what are you doing? They called a handoff. It's mm -hmm. not an RPO, son. Evan, thank you very much, brother. So you got a three. Yeah, but Evan, that's a three on the one book. There are three and a half other places I can't mention, and, and this is how we do this pod. We've encouraged you to shop. Yes, we're a FanDuel pod. Yes, we want you to play on FanDuel. You can find a three and a half. I'm encouraging you to go get it. A three. I, I just think this is a spot play. I know you don't like it. Jim, can I? The nicest thing I'll say is I would lean Clemson. And S&P Plus agrees. S&P Plus agrees. I know Plus they agrees. do. I know, I you know. You love S&P Plus. I want to get you a t-shirt that says S&P Plus. Okay. You're betting this? I'm betting it. Okay. And again, Clemson's top 15 against the rush. It's at home. It's back against the wall. It's the most exciting 20 seconds in college football. Howard's Rock. We're going to run the hill. It's Dabo melting I, I down. What, it, if, what, if, what if Caller Tyler does the opening coin toss? You got to play Clemson. Then it's all Clemson. I'm playing Clemson. I want to look up. I think if Dabo wins, he ties Howard, the guy with the rock, the coach. Yes. So, I don't know. You want to spin it all together? This is a magical Saturday in, in Clemson, South I Carolina. I didn't spin anything together. I, this is a hold your nose. It's gross, but I know we what I know. We have certain teams that are radioactive. I think Clemson just personally is one of them. I get the cap. You ride with it. I, it's I, your I, game. Yeah, maybe I'll be glowing in the dark by the second quarter. This this next one in the noon window, I'm all about. Oh, let's hear it. This is Florida minus five and a half against Arkansas. It's the noon kick on ESPN2. And what took place at Arkansas is nothing short of a religious experience. They have had an exorcism of Dan Enos from the program. And now their offense can live again. They still have KJ Jefferson. They're coming off a bye. Rocket, Rocket Sanders. Sanders expects to play Sam in this Pittman game. expects him to play. Okay. So we're talking about a running back confusion, a quarterback that can move, Dan Enos is gone from the program. He's been a disaster everywhere he's been. And then look at Florida, who just got done playing Georgia. We've talked about this before. Sometimes you play a team twice. SEC opponents are 1-3 and three following the Georgia game this season, losing by an average of 24 points per game. 17 was the closest. They beat people up. So if I'm Arkansas off a of bye, Get right spot. Here's the other thing. I like them. Look at Florida's schedule. You come off the, the Georgia rivalry. Sleepy noon spot here against Arky, who can they just really lose out? And you know who they play next week? 
Who? At LSU. Sandwich spot. So you're like in the middle of these two huge games. The beat, did Georgia beat them twice? We used to always say about it with Bama. And Sam Pittman's a dog against the spread. You got a power stat 17 here. and 7 ATS. As a dog. Yeah, as a dog. I got to be and honest. It's, and it's the devil's number five and a half. Like, Mike, is this everything? It's not everything because Arkansas might just be this bad. But your, your angle about Dan Enos being gone, maybe it getting called a little differently. I mean, Arkansas can't run the ball. Now, as part of that, Rocket Sanders maybe. been beat up and out. But they just can't run it. K.J. Jefferson's turned into, like, a passer. Look, if, if this was at Arkansas, oh, I think I'd be easy. more inclined. Easy. But, but you find out off a of bye if there's any fight, and if there is, I like right. five and a half against a beat-up Florida team. Are you team. playing this? Yeah, I am. We'll pig suey. I'm going to jump in the water with you. I'm going to... My you man. Know, you know what? I'm going to get in the water. Hold on. Get the sunscreen. Give me the five. Yeah, give me the five and a half. I'm gonna woo pig suey. Let's do this. Can't wait for Graham Mertz to slice us up. This is disgusting. I'm gonna do it because I like your cap. You've you've talked me into it, not by peer pressure, but by your hard work. Wow. I'm I'm gonna do it. That's disgusting. I have Clemson and Arkansas on the same card. <laughs> We're only a handful of games in. Good lord. Next one is number one Ohio State, minus 18 and a half at Rutgers on CBS noon kick. My question, yeah. should Ohio State be number one? No. I mean, I understand. Do you get it, though? Yeah, I get it on merit. But if you watch this team play, still major questions about Kyle McCord. Still major questions about the running game. They don't blow teams out. Defensively, how much is who they're playing versus how good they are? Um, look, man, if, if they're playing possum, it's going to be one of the greatest, like, villain moves ever. Like, all of a sudden, OSU is going to get to the Michigan game and look like Leviathan and just come out of the water like a fucking Kraken. I just, something is bothering me with this team on offense. Hey, I get it. You had to come to Jesus moment. You want, We really got to get the ball to Marvin Harrison. The last three, four weeks, it's what they're doing. Where's everybody else? Where's Stover the tight end? Can we get a Buka healthy? He's been hurt, yeah. Right. Can we see McCord able to distribute the football? I... Look, man, I'm just not going to be in the business of laying numbers with this team. Hell, look last week, and I understand. They pushed. They, buddy, they were tied at 10 with Wisconsin mm -hmm. on a backup QB. It's just not impressive. None of it jumps out to me. And on the flip side, how do I bet Rutgers? How do you do it? How, well, I, I'm betting this Winsett kit. How? No, they don't throw the ball. I can't. And I don't think you can be one-dimensional and, and hang with a team like Ohio State. If you forced me into a lean, it's the dog. No just, one's, just on sheer points. It's, it's on 18 and a half and no home. one's betting them. Yeah. You know, and, and the way OSU plays, I, I don't, does OSU score 30? I don't know. Rutgers yeah, it's, plays it's, D. Yeah. So, I, look, man. It's a stay away on a day where there's so many good games and then games that are just better betting. Like, I'm going to give yeah. you a shit game that's, to me, a great betting game. You want to go there or you want to go to your school first? Well, what's my school? Your school is Michigan State. I'd rather avoid that. You went there. You got a degree from right, there. That's... Let's get it out of the way, and then we're going to go to one of my favorite plays of the week. I just wanted to ask you how the hell's MSU only catching three from Nebraska. They're radioactive. They're awful. And you know what I said to myself? What? I have to ask Jim a question. Have you pondered the Levitt factor? Do you know what the Levitt factor is? I know he's one of your quarterbacks. Sam Levitt, true freshman from Oregon, four-star kid. He pops off the screen. And Kaden Hauser stinks. I hate to say it. It's just, I don't care you're Elite 11. I don't care you had all the offers. Kaden Hauser sucks. Levitt comes in the game and you're like, whoa, they're running some QB draw. He's scrambling. He's got a huge arm. Now, he's a freshman, uh -huh. but my, I, I'm not advocating this. I'm simply saying, why is this stuck? It is an odd number. It's, it's three flat. And by the way— And Nebraska has won three in a row. They play a little defense, and the public's— 88% exactly. of tickets, 84% of the money on Nebraska, and the line is just sitting at three. So you got radioactive state. Last home game, it is senior day. Oh. Does anyone have any pride? Not sure. I know I don't wear green out of the house. Levitt factor. I don't think I can make the, the impassioned bet MSU. Not coming from me. Not given how the season's gone. 
But this if is, you would like to offer No, no, it no, to I'm people. offering that this is going in the bully corner. It's going in the bully corner. You know why? I deserve happiness. And at some point, for no good reason, there's no draft pick to spoil. I would just like to win a game <laughs> because somehow three and nine looks better than two and ten. It's the double digits. And by, it, and, it's and it's you know aesthetically no, not I'm, a good I'm, look. And I mean this, no smarm. Matt Rule's done a really impressive job. Yes. It's impressive because I thought there was a chance they could go two and ten, three and nine. They have no quarterback. They can't throw the Mike, ball. It's, it's not saying much. They're in the race in the West right now. Right. And if can you imagine if Nebraska made the Big Ten title game and let's say they played Michigan? That spread would be 34 and a half. Yeah. Nice conference you got there. Um, but it's gonna go in the bully corner. But we'll get back to it. What if I got you a t-shirt? Levitt factor. I just, I was that you doing the O'Brien pose from the. Uh, listen, I like this kid, and I really, he's one of the handful of kids. Like, if you're asking me, Mike, are there like, like, like if it was a keeper, like when there's, yeah. um, like if, if MSU in this transfer portal era, when they hire a new coach, if I got to keep six keepers, Levitt would be one of my six. Jordan Hall, the true freshman linebacker mm -hmm, that starts from mm -hmm. one of the six. Sure. Um, I'm just, I, I know it's silly, and I know he comes in late in the game, and it's backups, and he's a true freshman. But you know when you play a guy and he – hey, how about CMU's running back? Mm -hmm. How about that kid? Only thing more impressive than the way he was running, he had a kid at 15. Oh. Wow. Lukes. What, what's his name? Trayvon Lukes? Marion Lukes. Marion Lukes. How about it being a dad at 15? I mean – What did the kids say? He had some good riz. <laughs> I mean, my God, 15 and he's a kid he's a, and he's a good running back. He my is, point he is, is, he we, jumps we off the off screen. Ones, yes. He jumps off the screen. Are you saying Levitt has Riz? Levitt is likes? Likes is Levitt? He's the Rizzler. He's the Riz. <laughs> Riz him up, baby. Um, I, I just, it's going in the bully quarter. It would okay. be state or pass because that number makes no sense and you can't be on Nebraska there. The next one, as you have dubbed it. This is the Battle of the Cox, people. South Carolina, the Gamecocks, versus Jacksonville State, the Gamecocks. One's in the SEC, one's in the, what are they, the Fun Belt, mm, Conference USA. So, yeah. Essentially, big cock, little cock. Let's play. Uh, Get out your tape measure. This is, this is South Carolina all the way. This is the funkiest thing of the week. First of all, South Carolina is two and six. Mm -hmm. Shane Beamer in his weekly press conference says his wife didn't invite him to Halloween because they're two and six. They're terrible. Wait, really? That's a real thing? Yeah. Um, two and six lay in 15 and a half to seven and two. Well, then let's do the anatomy class, shall we? Mm -hmm. Dissect the frog. Strength Mike. of schedule. South Carolina, toughest schedule in America. Jacksonville State, 133. How many Division I teams are there? 133. Jacksonville State does not throw the football. Which is a shame because that's the way you beat South Carolina. South Carolina, Carolina can't stop yeah. anything. Look, this is like the SEC. This is the get right spot. This is the slump buster. This is South Carolina. Uh, you could be a newly divorced man or divorced woman. Slump buster. You're going to the bar. Maybe you're shopping at the clearance rack. You're, you're out. You're single. You just want to feel the human touch. That's what this is. <laughs> South Carolina's laying 15 and a half. I got to go with it. Uh, Spurs up. I got to play the Gamecocks here. Why would that number, like, look, if this was South Carolina laying nine and a half, I'd get the heebie-jeebies like you wouldn't know. They are begging you to take Rich Rod and Jack State. I can't do it. If Shane Beamer doesn't get an impressive win here and they fall to two and seven, much less if they squeak this puppy out, their program's in a whole lot more trouble than I realize. I'm taking South Carolina, and I'm laying the 15 and a half. What's the bet differential? Hold, please. I know you were still reeling about the divorce comment. 70% um, <clears throat> of bets, 88% of the money on the Gamecocks. Well, they're both the Gamecocks. On the Big Cocks. Okay. So you are the riding that with are the in public the in this one. Okay. Is, I mean, I, we are with Arkansas, too. So you, you do it sometimes. Am I insane? A two and six football team favored over seven and two. Look at... Well, yeah, because when you first brought it up, I'm like, it, Jacksonville State's decent. Right, but then, decent. I gave, but then I gave you the anatomy. They have a pulse. Okay, here's... All right, so I just pulled this up on my phone. Here's who Jacksonville State has beaten. UTEP, wretched. Terrible. East Tennessee State, Awful. wretched. They played Coastal and got destroyed. Yeah, they're not any good. They played 
Eastern Michigan, horrible. Yeah, sorry about that. Bearcats with a K, Sam Houston State. They oh, were they had, winless yeah, they up until last until, week. Yeah. Uh, Middle Tennessee State, who's ass. Yeah. Liberty, Western Kentucky, FIU. Dude, they played no one. Yeah, all right. Western so, Kentucky's all right for that level of football. Elite helmets. So here's who South Carolina's played. Just pulled this up. Open with North Carolina. All right. Now, Furman is garbage. But here's the rest of the game. So you have North Carolina at Georgia, at Tennessee, home for Florida, home Miss State, at Mizzou, at a and This team's barely been at home. Spurs up, man. It's schedule differential. It's a get healthy spot. You got a team that doesn't throw the damn ball. You think you're going to march into an SEC stadium and just de-pants South Carolina running it 70 times? No, I'm playing South Carolina. I appreciate your conviction. Throw it on your card. Listen, man, it's what separates us as a podcast. This is what we do. This is who we are. I'm playing South Carolina. Next game, I, I think, is a spot play. This is the grossest card ever. Uh, it's going to be. <laughs> the next game is number 18, Utah, minus 11 and a half, hosting Arizona State. I was surprised you you had a, a deep cap on this one because mm-hmm. I thought number is dicey. Yep. It, it, how much do I believe in Arizona State, who's played really well? Kind of scrappy. No bowl to play for, but they're no. playing for dilly dilly. Nope. nope. Take me through it because you like Utah. This was not on our initial big board, but I was looking for something that jumped out. And this is Utah off a loss at home. Now, when you lose, sometimes late in the season, team quits on you. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's in Utah's DNA. I don't think they wilt under Kyle Whittingham. I think they bounce back at home. Yes. SP Plus says they should win by 17 points. Gotta love it. Arizona SP+. State's not good. They're scrappy, but they're not good. And they're going to one of the toughest places to play in the country. They're going to start a new win streak. I will play Utah laying that 11 and a half points. Nobody wants to. I will. That's some bold barbecue flavor, people. That's right. That's bold flavor. Any issue with the cap? Like, you don't think Kyle Whittingham team's going to quit after no, a loss no. last week? No, You know week. what? See, you just touched on something that's super important. In this new era of college football, the fact that part of your handicap is quit factor. Mm-hmm. With four or five weeks to go in a season. Not two. Mm -hmm. Not one. Not like, hey, senior day was last week. Now we're going on the road to get our heads taken off. We have no bowl to play for. And you go, geez, I wonder if they'll lay down. We're talking about teams laying down in late October, early November. That's really messed up. But I I, I, I will tell you, I was taken aback. They got blown out by Oregon. Okay? If I played the game, it would have been Oregon. I didn't. I didn't have the balls to do it. Yeah. But that almost makes me want to bet them more this week because Whittingham is such a good coach. They run such a good program. Yeah. Like program health factor is high. They're bought in. I think I like the side you're on. I'm just, I guess I'm acting like a little bitch. I'm afraid <laughs> to do it. And I shouldn't be, but I'm afraid to do it. Okay. You got I just plenty still of plays. feel like at some point does the pig farmer quarterback just turn into a pig. And that may have been what last week was. Yeah, you know, oink, oink. It just scares me. Listen, it's it's I'm laying points and I'm laying north of 10 points. Bad things could happen. Yeah. But I just don't think Arizona State's as good as they have appeared. Yeah. And I think Utah gets a bounce back win handily. 